Good evening and welcome to Simple Faith Calvary Chapel, our prophecy update for Friday, August the 28th. I pray that uh, this finds you well as we have a beautiful day here in Battleground, Washington. So much uh, going on in the world, so much going on within our own country. And uh, let's pray as we're coming before the Lord tonight. Lord, we just lift this time up to you once again. We ask that you'd lead us by your Holy Spirit, that you'd be glorified. And Lord, as we see and hear things, Lord, it would not be fear, bring fear or even a sinful anger, Lord, maybe a righteous anger, Lord, and, and yet a trust and a deeper trust in you and your word, more of a, a just continue to renew the zeal to reach the lost and to obey you in that, Lord. And we lift ourselves up to you in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So it's interesting as we, I just want to read a, a scripture before we dig in tonight. Um, it's in from uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. If you remember, uh, the Thessalonians thought that uh, Jesus had already come. There was false teachers that had come and said this was happening and that they're basically in the midst of the tribulation and all this terrible stuff was coming their way, which... Again, remember, they're in the midst of a huge persecution from Rome, and they'd already been persecuted by the Jews, and so uh, it wouldn't be too far of a fetch for them to kind of think that. But in chapter 2, Paul writes this, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as is from us as though the day of christ had come let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed and the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Now, again, some people read, especially verse 3, and say, For that day will not come, the rapture, until the great falling away comes first, and the son of us, uh, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, which would be the Antichrist. And they'll say those things have to happen before the rapture. But let, let's keep reading here in verse 7. It's interesting. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Talking about the Holy Spirit uh, in his work in the world, his work through the church of Jesus Christ, his work through us as believers. And then the lawless one will be revealed. So notice, after the Holy Spirit, after he, he, he who restrains is taken out of the way, that's after the rapture, after we've been, you know, because that's part of what we are, the Holy Spirit in us, the restrainer, after he's taken out of the way, after the rapture, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the coming of the lawless one is in accord with the working of Satan, with all power, signs, lying wonders. So you can go right into the book of Revelation. That's what he's talking about now. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive uh, the love of the truth that they might be saved. So again, this is talking before the, the tribulation and in the tribulation, before the rapture, after the rapture. And for this reason, God will send a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all should be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And so we see that that's what is coming for the world. And, and the Lord gave us uh, many things to be looking for uh, as we continue um, to just await the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And again, things to be looking for. I always just like to throw this up there uh, because it reminds us of what we're looking for as we're going through the news stories. Uh, the Lord returning Israel to its land. That's the, you know, what do they call the super sign, uh, which is, is, is happened and is still happening to this day. Uh, many uh, being deceived, a great delusion. Again, we see, we're just going to see the beginning of that, as we just said. And then the Lord kind of uses that to codify uh, the, the hearts of those who have rejected the truth and, and rejected God. 
uh, rejected Jesus Christ. Uh, notice wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes and storms, famines, or food shortages uh, coming more and more frequently like birth pangs of a woman in labor, the great falling away from the faith. We talked about that a little bit in depth last week for a few minutes. Apostasy, false teachings, hatred for Christians and Jews to grow around the world. The rise of a one-world government and system, um, a one-world a one monetary system, a cashless system as well. Lawlessness increasing, the love of many uh, growing cold. We're talking a lot about that tonight. <laughs> Same as with this, wickedness, sexual immorality, thoughts on evil continually, and on and on it goes. There's a lot of things that we're going to to be looking for. And let's jump right in tonight. Um, here we see persecution of Christians continuing on, continuing to grow around the world. Here we read of a 16-year-old girl was among at least 11 Christians uh, murdered in Nigeria. And we continue to see uh, the church there uh, in Africa uh, just in all over. Um, and notice it's with the crescent moon because, again, it's, it's the Muslims that are, are doing this and attacking and killing and they're killing Christians first and foremost but they're also they'll kill villagers or anybody who will not um, bow to Allah and so we see again here uh, radical Muslims wage war for the control of Nigeria and uh, it's just really sad and the next page actually says you know that they're trying to force Christians you know again to and, and apparently Christians make up about half the population of Nigeria um, to convert to Islam, basically, or die, or leave, flee, if, they, if they're even given that opportunity. But notice there in the second uh, paragraph over, the second uh, column, it says, in the last 20 years, it's massive, massive attacks against Christians. Um, Jeff King, president of International Christian Concern, told CBN, um, 50 to 70,000 people have been murdered. And, and a lot of those Christians, and uh, it's just crazy. We see, we're seeing that uh, the persecution of Christians continue to grow here in our own country. Um, we're seeing things come in, and I just want to take just a moment. Um, I heard somebody say, and I and I agree with them that coming in through two areas now that because it's kind of been made clear. Forming. Um, charade that's been going on and uh, because if you think about it again what did the Lord tell us to look for all these things storms and earthquakes and different things global warming can't cause much of what they're saying it does cause and it's just kind of a, an interesting whole thing to go down that road I'm not going to go too far but my point is this Satan wants the world to believe that the signs that Jesus gave us to be looking for for the return of you know, for the sign of the, the, the rapture of the church and the imminent return of Christ. Um, he wants us to think, well, no, that's just natural occurring things, because, especially, again, because of what? Mankind. But that, So that's going to be one of the things. You're going to see them taking away more and more freedoms in a lot of the states in America and, and cities. They've already taken away. You can't have this natural gas. You can't have this because we, we don't want you to use it. Even though it's cleaner for the air and environment, we still are, we want that control because global warming... The second thing now is going to be things like COVID-19. And, and that's why I'm kind of, if you, why, do we, why do we focus so much? Because I think that's one of the ways that the enemy right now is conditioning people to get ready to receive this worldwide control that we're, we're speaking, that's spoken of in the Bible. And so that's why we're talking about things. And, and, and what that means, though, is that Christians, again, are going to be persecuted more and more. We're going to be called to step in line. And here you go. God speak Calvary Chapel. We've been talking about the, these fellows for about a month now. As Pastor Bob Rob McCoy continues to be threatened by uh, jail time, um, you know, fining, and you know they, they find you know three thousand dollars for holding in indoor worship. Uh, we we see political leaders are actually um, showing a support for uh, Pastor Rob, uh, uh, Senator Rand Paul, which we're going to be talking about him and his wife uh, a little bit later on in this. Uh, Ted Cruz, and it's kind of nice to see some of the guys who proclaim Christ in our, in our government actually standing up and, and saying, hey, yeah, we need to stand up for Christ. Now, here's another thing. We talked a little bit about this last Sunday, but um, last Saturday it kind of broke that uh, Calvary Chapel Downey with uh, Pastor Jeff Johnson, 
um, also has now been fined. Uh, they're threatening of cl turning off the water, the power, um, you know, all these silly, silly things that, that they're trying to get them on just to get them not to be able to meet. Here's another thing. Uh, Todd Starnes reports that California threatens to arrest anyone who attends an indoor church service. So it's so it's so dangerous to go to an indoor church service, but it's okay to go to the local pot shop or go to the local liquor store. Or, you know, uh, again, it's kind of crazy. We're going to talk again more about that as well. But we'll see the um, you know the the continuing on in that story. The city's prosecutor also threatened to permanently shut down the church building. Um, and, and uh, you know, arrest people. Um, you know, it's just crazy. Uh, they turn a blind eye, though. One of the people, you know, shot back. These are the same people who are turning a blind eye when thousands are on the streets, not just uh, disobeying the command not to meet or to wear masks when, when you're around all those people but they're also out there looting and burning and destroying and attacking people and nothing happens to them it's it's beyond it's just wickedness is really what it is and now this was kind of cool this last week you know that uh, was reported that uh trump president trump gave john MacArthur a call and just thanking him for making a stand you know telling them that churches are essential and you know, I'll, I just, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I'm, I have no love affair with President Trump. I, I voted for um, one of the other guys that was running against him in the primaries. But when it came down to it, the last time we just had a choice between him and Hillary, and you have to go with the one who, at least at that point, was saying, hey, I'm not going to be for the murder of unborn babies and other things. And now we see he's been the, the most pro-Israel president that we've ever had, the most pro-Christian president I believe we've ever had, and all these other things, the most anti-abortion president that I, I still think we've ever had, and other things, okay? He's not perfect, he's a sinner, but the platform... Uh, Wayne Grudem, uh, uh, a professor in theology, and he he wrote, he written tons of books. He even has a great work, by the way, uh, just on theology. His book on theology is really good. I mean, he wrote a whole article about this, why you know he believes Christians should vote for Trump, and because it, it's not just a vote for Trump. And um, but again, I'm, this isn't a commercial for him. But my point is that we're voting for a, a platform of ideas. And so it's it's never been more stark as we're going to continue to go. So when I say, show these things, I'm trying to tell you that it's not because I'm a Trump, you know, yay, yay, yay. But I am very thankful for what God has done through him. And if he's pandering to us, hey, God is using it for his good and his glory. So we're going to receive it and, and, and be wise as serpents in the meantime. Now here's another thing. L.A. County Superior Court Judge Mitchell Beckloff ruled Monday in opposition to the county's position denying a restraining order for the fourth time. And again, this was against John MacArthur's church. So we're seeing the city and the state. Now, from what another pastor friend of mine said, California, a lot of the cities don't want to go after the churches from what I've been reading, and even the counties. But the state now is saying, if you don't go after these churches, and it's probably the governor, Newsom, he's a wicked man. We need to be praying for him. But we also need to stand against them as we can. Um, but apparently he's basically saying, if you don't do this, you know, we're going to take your money away, Ventura County. We're going to take your money away from this city or that city. And so, again, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's just wicked, uh, the things that they're doing. Um, and here, right, this is another thing on the, the East Coast, you know, uh, during Mass in Philadelphia, uh, basically a suspect... Um, came up, and you can see in this next slide that she went up and uh, actually punched a lady after she read from the scriptures up there. And it, the, the video shows her punching this lady twice. Now, here's the kicker, guys and gals. The previous slide said they were looking for this woman. Well, apparently they found her, but the prosecutor, remember, in, in democratically controlled Philadelphia, decided there was nothing to prosecute. You want to see that picture again? Let's look at the picture again. That's a full-on punch. That's a called assault. And, 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 and not just once, but twice. And so, again, we see the wickedness. We see the beginning more and more of the hatred of Christians, the hatred of Jesus Christ pointed at us. Here's another uh, California church fined $10,000 for holding indoor 
um, services, worship services, how dare they, they actually sang during their gatherings. And uh, this is a Baptist church in California. Uh, it, you know, basically, uh, Timber said that, um, he basically was pushing back, the pastor said that they went along with all the state's mandates, but then once they started to see basically that, you know, or where it's underlined, you know, being a more in a county of, of more than one million people and only 225 uh, died and a hundred of those deaths being in nursing, nursing homes, he went with the facts. He went with the science, but he also went with we need to obey God. And uh, he, once he saw it, it's like this is ridiculous what they're doing. It makes no sense. And he said at the end, he said, yeah, let's be safe. Yes, let's be careful, but this area needs the church. And all areas, by the way, need the church of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're told not to forsake the gathering together of the brethren, no matter what uh, the, the state says, the county says, especially, again, when we know, you know, this disease, we're going to come up on it. I'll, I'll let it go until we get up there. So this next story, it's kind of going now into more of the natural disasters Um uh, you know, the earthquakes, again, that seismos means things on the land, things on the sea. And so in Brazil, it's kind of interesting right now. There's more than 15,000 individual fires um, and basically consuming the rainforest. And, uh, you know, the president is, is basically saying that it's like, some of it's purposeful, some of it's not. It was kind of just a hot thing, but it kind of ties in what's going in with California. Now, the reason I brought the California fires up again is, is check this out what they're saying now. I mean, I've born and raised in Southern California my whole life um, until we moved up here to Washington. Notice, thousands of Californians flee. Notice, as officials battle largest wildfires in state history. Again, remember when we're looking at these kind of things and we're talking about birth pangs, we're talking about things that happen all the time. There's always fires in California and, and in the West. That's just part of the natural thing that, that God has designed. It, it, a lot of it burns away old brush and can do good things. Um, but it's interesting now, we look for things like this, the biggest, the, or hasn't happened for so many, you know, 100 years. Or the, you know, and so again, here we see, uh, with all the wired wildfires, think about just even the last 10 years. Now there is, this is the largest wildfires in the state's history. Actually, you can see a, a picture to the right there of them trying to fight. Looks like they're setting a backfire. If you look to the left, you'll see even from, that's like a weather satellite. You, they can see that's the smoke from all the fires, uh, a lot of it burning. Uh, and here's another irregular picture uh, from the smoke from all the fires that are burning across uh, Southern California. Uh, Franklin Graham, there's so much uh, so uh, that uh, he put up a prayer request and you know, is to be praying. And, and here's in Denver, interesting, and I just, again, this is from a secular place, and they said, Armageddon on its way, question mark. And, and look at the fire, there's Grand Junction. My wife and I were just there a few weeks ago driving by that area. And uh, just a, a beautiful area, uh, very dry, but again, just to keep an eye on these things. Now again, with that same thing with weather and with, with natural disasters, this was from last week. This was before the hurricane came in. So this was a, a separate entity, a separate event on August 21st. And this they had a record number of simultaneous water spouts off the coast of Louisiana. And so if you can see in that picture there, the next one will show it a little better. Um, but they just had this record number of, of water spouts. It's just beautiful. But, you know, in a way, fires are beautiful, too. It's, it's terrifying and beautiful all at the same time. But, again, it, it's just, you know, thought of, you just kind of see this apocalyptic kind of, um, you, you see greater than normal, uh, basically. And here we have, um, again, urgent prayer needed, um, but National Hurricane Center now calls it unsurvivable. Now, this was Hurricane Laura a couple days ago. This is what they were saying, unsurvivable. Um, you know, basically, it's a category uh, a, a four. But for a short time, uh, Talia and I got some notices on our phones that it actually went to a category five just before landfall. And uh, notice they're expecting 20-foot storm surge expected that nobody could survive. You know, here's the picture of the hurricane. Just how huge. Look how huge that is you know and, and here it is is making landfall and here's some data on it it was 
400 miles, or excuse me, Katrina was 400 miles wide, Hurricane Ike was 300 miles wide, Hurricane Harvey 280, Hurricane Laura was 650 miles wide. And it became a Cat 5, like I said, right before landfall. But you know what? It's so funny. We were all saying, you know, hey, let's keep, let's be praying for Louisiana. Let's be praying for Eastern Texas, Southern Texas. And it came up, it came on land, and I think there was five people killed, I want to say, a total that I've heard so far. Um, but that's a miracle compared. The storm surge, from what I read, was only up to like eight feet. It should have been a 20. And, and, and I, it's, again, this still came in, but I firmly believe that um, this was God's grace. Because look at the top of the headline. This was one of the strongest hurricanes ever to hit the U.S. I heard that it was the largest hurricane to hit the, the United States in over 100 years. So again, you just see these things happening. You see, and, we're gonna, and again, if, this is, if these are the signs of the times, we should see things like this get a bit worse and worse. But again, there might be that... I remember like birth pangs, they come and they go and they get worse. And uh, I, I had to put this next story in. I, I you know, um, <laughs> the first male murder hornet ever found in the U.S. captured in Washington state. And, uh, you know, this is, it's so funny because somebody's asked me, it's like, well, what do you think in the book of Revelation when those hornet kind of creatures come out of the, you know, the pit, uh, are, are they real creatures I, I really believe they are could they be uh you know examples of you know some guy sitting in a tank the head sticking out had the head as, as a human i've heard read all those things and hey i could be wrong but when you see these hornets like this dude you're like hey this is almost the same thing look at the size of this thing there's a ruler look at that guy's thumb so this thing's huge there you go compared to a regular uh hornet up there so I you know again I'm just pointing this out. This has it doesn't really have too much to do with it, but I just found it kind of an interesting um, thing. Now, again, as we see kind of under famines or food shortages uh, in New York, they're lining up. This there's this is a food line um, for free food in Queens. It's a quarter of a mile long. Uh, people say it. You know, it's like the bread lines that they read about or studied about uh, back in the 1930s. And the saddest part is these are all done by the cities uh, and even the states. And it's just such a wicked thing what they're, what they're still continuing to create and to um, drive through this whole COVID thing. And uh, even not just the COVID thing, by the way, through allowing the riots to happen. A lot of these people that you see in line right here, they don't have stores anymore to go to because they've been looted and burned out. And it's just a wicked and sad thing. Now, this next story was under wars of rumors of wars. China, U.S. tensions, are they're high. Most of us don't hear this again because it's COVID, 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 or it's, you know, BLM or whatever. Um, China tensions high, you know, as China fires ship killer missiles as a warning. And, and so we see that the, the, between Russia and the United, or excuse me, China and the United States, that there's still that military, you know, kind of pushing back and forth. Uh, here... Um, in the South Philippines, 70, 14 were killed, 75 were wounded um, by a, a suicide bomber. And uh, it just that's continuing to happen around the world just today. I got this just this afternoon. Um, military, our U.S. military intercepted six Russian military jets uh, near Alaska again and uh, so again we, we've seen stories like this before over the last couple months that and i think we do a push back and forth i know we had a youtube bomber um and i think i'm getting this right i might be mixing myself up here but that interrupted some exercises in russia that the russians were doing and they're part of of the the sea but um and and again these things are going to happen but we, again we just keep our eyes on wars and rumors of wars and things like that as we continue uh, tonight, we, we, you know, how could we not come to Portland, Oregon? Uh, right across the river from us takes, you know, 20, 25 minutes to get to the airport from where I am right now. And, uh, and Portland, for the most part, is a very beautiful city. It needs, you know, more and more Jesus. But here we see, look at this, you know, the Portland, Oregon courthouse today. Um, you know, here's your democratic, progressive utopia. And look at all the waste. 
Look at all the pollution. Where's all the environmentalists, by the way? Why aren't they out there protesting the protesters and saying, hey, if you're going to do this, keep it clean? Oh, we know that will never happen, right? And here we have a report, you know, that officers down there have been struck by rocks, bottles, other dangerous objects. And uh, the, po the Portland police declare violent, you know, protests. And, and here in this picture, they actually were filling up balloons uh, with feces and with their urine and throwing it at the police. And I just, I, I, I wanted to th go by that slide quick because it's really disgusting. But I also wanted to show it because it shows the depravity of the people that are doing this. I mean, to, 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 to think that somebody would stop and say, hey, let's fill up this balloon with our urine or, you know, feces and throw it at the police. That is demonic to me. That is, and, and that's what we need to understand, that, that, that there's demonic influence behind this whole thing. And that's what the Lord said, that lawlessness would increase. And again, it's not just here in the United States. It's, BLM is not just here. It's in Europe. It's in uh, Brazil. It's in other places around the world. And um, it, it's, it's all demonically influenced. And, it, and again, it's to tear down, especially here in the United States, though, especially here, the freedoms that we have, the, the form of government. Here's another interesting thing we have. Um, this was in Portland. Um, and again, we're going to notice that they, in their protest, quote unquote, they put a stuffed bear inside, guess what? A guillotine. Now, how long has it been since you've even heard of a guillotine? We, I mean, we don't even use those. I don't know that we've ever used those in the United States, even for the death penalty. Um, but notice the, the protesters brought out this guillotine to the streets of Portland. And, and they're, by the way, we're going to see another guillotine later in another story. So just keep this in the back of your mind. And I liked what a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, he's a pastor, Andrew Cochran, said about this. He said, interesting that the mob in Portland brings out a guillotine. He said, Revelation 20 verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and, the judge, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been, what? Beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads and on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So again, we see uh, just that preparing, getting people used to, maybe the guillotine's gonna come out more and more, because again, it comes out, I think it was on the East Coast, or it might have been in Wisconsin. Here we see um, another police shooting uh, triggers more riots. We saw this last week in Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, in, in the midst of the riots, if you look down at the bottom, it says one officer was hit in the head with a brick. He dropped to the pavement unconscious. The mob cheered. You know, just to lighten this up just a little bit, you know, breaking the same people who said Trump would destroy America are destroying America. And that's really what's happening, guys and gals. We're seeing the destruction of a Judeo-Christian country. That's the, that's the heart. We had to be taken out of the way. And this is how it's going. And, and it looks like it's going to continue down this road. Even if Trump is reelected, I, you know, the Antifa and even BLM, they've threatened, well, we'll, have a, we'll start a revolution. Um, I don't think that would go very well. But again, it would still tear our country more and more apart. Um, even if Trump loses, you know, they're going to continue to do what they're doing. They've been emboldened and uh, they want to tear down our country. They want to tear down uh, what the Lord has built up. And, and they lie all the time. I mean, again, because they say they want to be, uh, you know, a socialistic, a democratic socialist country. Well, there's no such thing, by the way. Here's a Cuban-American businessman warns at RNC. He spoke at the RNC. You might want to go back and, and listen to him. He's very good. Um, I, he said, I hear echoes of Castro in Chicago and Portland. He goes on in the middle there. He says, I'm speaking to you today because I've spoken to people like this before. I've seen movements like this before. Uh, the, you know, I've seen ideas like this uh, before, and I'm here to tell you we cannot let them take over our country. All the way to the right there. Those false promises spread the wealth defund the police, trust in a socialist state more than your family and your community, they don't sound radical to my ears. They sound familiar, he continued. When Fidel Castro was asked 
If he was a communist, he said he was a Roman Catholic. Sound familiar, anybody? He knew he had to hide the truth, but the country I was born in is gone, totally destroyed. And, and he's talking about, you know, Cuba. I have uh, family members that were had married into the Cuban society and culture, and, and they were glad to have gotten away from there. But you see, even during President Obama, for him to make that visit over there, and I'm not even... Um, down on him for trying to make peace. I think that's always a, a good goal. But when you lie about it all, you know, oh, the Cuban people are great, they're wonderful. Well, what are they going to say? Because if they say anything, they'll be put in jail and or killed or, you know, something like that. But we have a mob that that's really what's happening. A lot of our culture, the Democrats especially, a lot of the Republicans aren't standing up against it either. So they become complicit. But never give in to the mob. If you look on top, this was a, is a famous picture of people giving the Heil to Hitler. And the, the one below is there's a new BLM thing that you have to hold up your arm. Like, you know, almost like if you notice, it's very similar to the Nazi, uh, you know, salute to Hitler. But if you notice that gal that's sitting down there, if you hadn't seen this video, she would not raise up her hand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. And so she's attacked by the mob. But... If you notice, I don't see any black people there. And so, again, you have these, but they're all young. They're all hateful of hate. They're all just listening to the to the demons and, and to their own hatred and desires for power. It's just wickedness. And, and to continue along with this, Austin City, they allot $250,000 for abortion access, while at the same time, they cut $150 million dollars from the police budget. And again, lawlessness will continue uh, to increase. And again, we saw in Wisconsin all these riots going on now because another black man was shot. Oh, and he, by the way, if you watch CNN, if you watch MSNBC or any of the other main networks, they're all saying that he was innocent, that he was shot in front of his three kids. Gosh, so much so, the news was so fake that even Franklin Graham came out and said this fellow should not have been shot. Well, guess what? The, 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 there's cameras, there's everything. He, he assaulted police officers, by the way. There was a, an arrest warrant out. He was being charged with the sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl. Um, there was other things. And so he was not an innocent guy like they were showing. And so he had a knife in the, on the floorboard of his car. And if you'll notice, when he got shot is when he was trying to dive into his car to get something, which was right where the knife was. You know, when you look at these things, the police had every right to do what they did to defend themselves. And I had a friend of mine went through and kind of just highlighted all the different things. And we're not going to get into that. But, you know, here's the thing. Stop complaining. Let's go back to, you know, a lot of the, the Jews back in, you know, the 1930s and 40s. As long as we do what they want, that, you know, want us to do, everything's going to be just fine. Well... I don't think so. There's another one I saw. Remember when they told us not to spank our children? Well, they're all adults now. And right into the Seattle rioters. Uh, this last week, they tried to seal police officers inside the precinct with cement and set the building on fire. Just pure wickedness. You know, and, and here you go. Portland mayor blames violence on small groups, says city is in a dark dystopia. Yes, it is, Mr. Mayor, because you've allowed this to happen for, what is it, 80 days now, whatever it is, and and it's just wicked. They're not going down peacefully protesting. That's that's not how, it's, that's not it. They're, they're, it's violent and wicked. And sadly, most of the things that if they were pre peacefully protesting, don't, they're protesting for nothing because most of it is just lies on top of lies and on top of deception. But again, we see the beginning of the spiritual delusion, those believing the lies. Now, here's an interesting thing. Back in Wisconsin, we see a church that was basically, hey, we love Black Lives Matter. We're, we support the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, guess what they did? They, they burned this church down. Bradford Community Unitary Universalist Church. And so it actually wasn't even, it's not a Christian church. It's just everybody, everything is, you know, universal, whatever. But they also, there in Kenosha, Wisconsin, they vandalized synagogue. 
you know, and and other things. It's just again wickedness. And let's remind you all that what Sean King, one of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter, he said this. Yes, I think statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They are a form of white supremacy. Always have been. You know what? Again, if you're a Christian out there, I have friends that I know that marched with Black Lives Matter. Hey, I understand your heart. I really do. But your heart was so wrong, it's not even funny. If you, hey, look, if you're a racist, repent. If, you, if you've been racist against people, go back to them and tell them you're sorry. Repent. But if you're not a racist, then you don't need to apologize. I'm not going to apologize for, you know, raping someone when I've never raped someone. It, it's just silly. But if you supported Black Lives Matter, you need to go and read stuff like we just read. Go to their own website. They're fascist. They hate the Western culture. They hate the, the biblical family. On and on it goes. We cannot support Black Lives Matter. Black lives do matter, by the way. So do white lives and brown lives and yellow lives and orange lives and pink lives. Every life matters to God. Jesus Christ died for every life. Period. And we can't put up with racism from any of those communities. And sadly, that's what's happening with this. We're, we're allowing their racism, their hatred, their bitterness and anger to catch fire. Reminds me what James said about the tongue and how it, what a mighty fire it can start. And so be careful, Christian. Don't get caught up in this stuff. Don't get caught up in the lies. Now, here you go. Biden on riots. This is Trump's America. And he goes on and even lies, saying that Kelly Allen Conway said that Trump wanted the um riots to happen I, I you know this again ha most of this stuff now could be under you just can't make this stuff up um here's president trump who is was had even threatened just to send in the national guard and 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 joe biden and other democrats oh you can't do that that's you know against our freedom as states and so trump kind of did take a, a back pedal and it, it's just again it's the wickedness of the political left it's the wickedness of the um, those in authority over us a, a lot of them and it's also the wickedness of hollywood and a lot of our sports figures as we've been seeing um, even this next story most people haven't heard this this last week a black man in south carolina there was a fender bender and uh basically uh he hit a car in front of him and he got out of the car um and he he shot all three all shot all three two of them died immediately at the scene one still in the hospital and again i'm not even saying that it was racist i i won't say that because that's uh, that's we shouldn't do that but my point and as we brought in up the thing with the the man who killed the little bo next door neighbor boy it's if it, if you'd reversed it the left would be crying crying racism 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 but when it happens the other way around it it doesn't matter to them and so we need to be wise as serpents innocent as doves and just say the truth and stand up against the lies and know the lies that the left is telling us. And it, it's just really wicked stuff. Um, here again, here's some more BLM. You know, here's the peaceful protesters, by the way, rioting in Minneapolis again. And, uh, you know, it, it just again, they're, 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 it's a whole video of them just looting and robbing. Here's the other um, thing I wanted to show you. This is in Washington, D.C., and as they're protesting against Trump, guess what they brought out? Another guillotine. I think we might be seeing this more and more. Um, at the same time, here's Virginia Senate. They pass a bill now reclassifying assault of, as, of a police officer as a misdemeanor and remove any mandatory minimum of time. And again, if you look all the way over to the right, this includes a magistrate, law enforcement officer, correctional officer. This means those in prisons. Um, you know, anybody involved in care or treatment or supervision, even firefighters or volunteer firefighters. So someone, you know, a firefighter comes to a scene and he gets attacked. It's not a mandatory sentence. It's not a felony anymore. Again, they want to encourage the lawlessness. They want it to increase. They want the disorder. But the interesting thing, by the way, I'll bring you back to me real quick. We've seen this last week. The Democrats are starting to realize that it's hurting them politically. And I, I think you're going to start to see a reversal. I don't know if they're going to be able to rein them in. They might be able to because even last night, Rand Paul said he thought a lot of the people that were attacking them were more like paid 
And I agree with that, by the way. I know even here in Portland that a lot of the, the rioters, um, have, you know, I, I've heard different things of them being paid. And that's been for years, by the way. It's not new that these people are paid to go out and protest and to do this these different things. So that's not, you know, a different thing. Now, this is, to me, it's a hard balance. It's like, I'm glad, so glad. This is a dad. If you remember CHOP, they had the little, their own zone up there in Seattle. Well, there was a, a poor young man. He was 19 years old. There was two of them that were shot. And uh, he, this 19-year-old man was killed. Um, and his family is now suing the city for, uh, you know, uh, $3 billion. I think it's going against the state as well. Um, because, again, they, you know, if you look all the way over to the right, he didn't have the help. He needed help. He needed me, and I wasn't there. You know, and basically, you know, he said that, you know, uh, there is a botched emergency response, politically charged armed anarchist protesters, you know, to infiltrate, take over, and govern part of the Seattle uh, city um, and King County. It looks like he's suing King County and the governor. Now, he's suing for $3 billion, and part of me is like, man, I hope he gets every single penny. But then I realize that that's our money. <laughs> this is state money. And, and it doesn't grow on trees. It's not like that they don't, you know, they don't really care. I wish they could sue Governor Inslee personally, you know, and the mayor of, of, of Seattle personally, and, and those this, those who are over the, you know, King County personally. I really do that, that it's, you know, wicked. Now, here's the, the mayor of Chicago. She literally came out last week because rioters had come around her home and she called the police and they came and drove them away. And she said in response, you know, to people saying stuff, well, I have a right to protect my home. But then you have the people down below, if you remember, they were out there because rioters came on their property, broke through their fence, and they get arrested for protecting theirs. Again, that's the left versus the right. It's a really sad and wicked thing. Now, BLM, I'm not going to cover this too long, but man, they came out and were talking about some of their beliefs spiritually and, you know, what kind of drives them. And it's really this... Um, if you notice that one of them down below the second column or the second column there, she was raised Jehovah's Witness, and ancestral worship became really important. And 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 by the way, within some African culture, there's also a, 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 a ancestral worship as well. And so basically, if you look go all the way over to the right there, um, Abdullah explained that where that whenever the word or excuse me, there is word that an African-American person losing their life, uh, likely in relation to law enforcement incidents, they go out and, quote, pray and pour libation. And so they do that wherever that person was killed. And it goes on to explain libation is an act that is defined as a ritual pouring of liquid as an offering to a god or spirit uh, or in memory of those who have passed on. So again, it's interesting to see that the, on their website they hate Western spirituality, but they love you know the the weird you know uh, cultic things uh, that aren't of that. Now, a couple days ago, or it might have been just yesterday. I, I, let me put my glasses on so I can actually see a little bit better. Yeah, it was two days ago. Um, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calls Trump and congressional GOP, notice, enemies of the state. And we've talked about this rhetoric before, how they're purposely making Republicans, purposely making even, like I, I myself am I'm, I'm an independent, but you know I'm going to definitely vote for Trump. But anybody who votes for Trump or supports him, that basically were a danger to the state. And so what happens with rhetoric like this? Notice, Kevin McCarthy says, hours after Nancy Pelosi labeled Republicans as uh, domestic enemies, leftist mobs harassed, intimidated, and tried to incite violence against Republicans on the street. Here's an example. Vicious bullies threatened Rand Paul and his wife was with him um, in the street. Police literally saving our lives from a crazed mob. And it wasn't just them, by the way. If you look all the way over to the right, there they were. It didn't matter what color you were, by the way. So not all Black Lives Matter, obviously. It's just the ones that agree with their political points of view. So talk about some, you know, hypocrisy. Um, but again, they they're yelling at them, cursing at them, getting right in their face, threatening them, um, pushing police. It was just wicked. You can go on again. Most of you probably have already seen. Here's a. 
a, 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 a homosexual man who is supportive of, of President Trump, but he was attacked, him and his friends, and called all these racial slurs um, and uh, just wicked stuff. And, and again, you don't see it on the main news. They, we're talking about real homosexual um, violence going on, and, and they're being called all these slanderous words. It's all on video, by the way, too. I saw the video. And uh, did you see CNN or MSNBC or MSN? Any of them? No, they they, they don't care. They don't really care. It's, it doesn't fit their agenda. They don't care. Now, going into COVID for just a couple minutes, because again, they're they're really trying to control us here. Notice this. Notice back from 311. Th these are the total um, deaths and total um, recoveries, and you know different things like that, and. Um, so we see, and this is just in San Diego, okay? So, but I just wanted to, because I thought this was very interesting. If you notice that the cases go up and up and up, recovered go up and up and up, but notice down at the very bottom that the deaths basically are almost stagnant. They stay about the same. And, and here's the beauty of that is we see this, by the way, happening all over the country. The, the number of cases is going up. The deaths are way down compared to what it was before at the beginning. But and so what does that mean? That means that the percentage of, of deaths per the sickness is going down and down and down and down. But why do they keep wanting to lock everything up and have everybody wear masks and do all this stuff? Again, there's there's something going on behind it. Look at this. VA health official wants to enforce or to force everyone to get COVID-19 vaccine. We don't even know what's in it yet. A normal vaccine, and even President Trump last night in the State of the Union saying, hey, we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year. Dude, it takes everything I'd ever heard or read, four to six years, maybe longer, to get a vaccine. And remember, COVID has been around since the early 2000s, at least. And, and we had, you know, don't remember H1N1, that's a form of COVID. And, and there's no vaccine for that. Why not? Why is there all of a sudden this whole big push? And by the way, Bill Gates is talking about around the world. And, and, and again, it's just, it, 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 there's something else going on, obviously. We're not stupid. Now, here, check this out. CDC came out, I think this was just today. And uh, no, I guess it was a couple of days ago, but they said CDC now says people without COVID-19 symptoms, symptoms, excuse me, do not need to be tested. And so if you look up at the top there to the right, you know, a doctor said, well, this is potentially dangerous, said Dr. Krutika Kapali, an infectious disease physician in Palo Alto, California, restricting text, uh, testing to only people with obvious systems of COVID-19 means you're not looking for a lot of people who are potential spreaders of the disease, she added, and I feel like this is going to make things worse. Again, it's all about fear, guys and gals. It's all about trying to make us more and more afraid. Oh, there's you know all these different things. You know what? I, I, I pray and I weep for those who have lost loved ones. Don't ever get me wrong. I know this is a real disease, but it is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Even if they come up with the vaccine, and even if it really works well, think about the flu vaccine that we take every year. Guess what? It's, does, the flu doesn't go away. It, it, but nobody's thinking logically. Nobody's talking like this. It's just kind of weird. Here's a Yale professor. We talked a little bit about him a week or two ago. And he you know, basically is saying, look, there's the evidence is now overwhelming for fighting COVID with hydroxychloroquine. And, you know, it, it's just he hates the fact that it's, you know, become political. I like this one. It says, I was there 3,000 years ago when they said 15 days to slow the spread. Or if you've had to use Zoom at all, it's like never uh, explicitly explained how the Brady Bunch had access to Zoom in the 1970s. I thought that was made me smile. Now here's an interesting thing on masks. Um, this is from the CDC. And they're so vague. If you really read through what they say about masks, it's, it's incredible. I just, just that one underlying part, if you read it with me there in the first uh, column, it says, because the general public has not received training on proper selection and use of respiratory PPE, um, it cannot be certain whether respiratory PPE worn 
Personal protective equipment is what PEPE stands for. Worn during uh, contact with an individual with COVID-19 infection protected them from exposure. Basically what they're saying there is, look, even if you're wearing a mask, we can't say that that's really going to protect you from wearing, you know, getting COVID-19 because we don't know if you've been trained in the proper use of PPE. Now, again, a note, another thing with the mask, you ever notice how they don't care what kind of mask you put on? Um, because... It, they, it, it, if it was, it would have to be an N95 mask or better to protect you. And even to protect everybody else, by the way, a lot of the um, N95 masks, they have what, you know, the little respirator on it. So it protects you when you breathe in, but when you breathe out, all your, all your, N, you know, if you have the, you know, the Rona, it's going out there just like everything else. So again, it's kind of interesting. Um, now, here's, again, you see just the different sides. The, the CDC just said there's no need to test everybody. But now here in Southern California, second free COVID testing super site opens in, in Orange County. You know, I'm sorry, but it, it, with a lot of the, the, the news and a lot of the politicians, there's almost like this excitement, isn't there? Almost like this, whoa, we finally have this thing that, you know, we've seen movies and TVs. We're just missing the zombies, and, you know, and, and there's almost this weird excitement. We all can wear a mask and let's all be together and we're all in this together. And it's just, it's honestly, it's wicked. And then you have stuff like this. Jay Inslee, you know, hey, yeah, you can go into a store and you can buy all this stuff. You can stand in line and you can, but you can't go outside and pick your pumpkin. You know, seriously, is that not just nuts? Same thought here. Look at this. Go on a bus. You can ride in a public bus. That's safe, but it's extremely dangerous if you go outside and you're around other people. Again, it just, it, here's the facts. This is in America. This was in a couple days. This is, I think, yesterday or a couple days ago. The deaths are 0.06 of a percent of the population of, of total Americans have died from COVID-19. 2% of our population have had or had it. The, the right or the one on the left kind of goes a little bit deeper. And, and so, you know, when we say that, that 0.06% have died from COVID, 2% of the population have had or had it. Even that 0.02%, by the way, I think it's more like 0.01%. And the reason I say that is because there's overwhelming, it's not even, I don't like to call it evidence, overwhelming facts that the numbers have been gymmed up, you know, ginned up, excuse me, and um, added to, you know, well, if you just have COVID and you die of something else, we're still going to count that as a COVID death. And we have, again, you've seen them, news stories from people who died with overdoses, COVID-19 death. Some people who died from car crashes, COVID-19 death. Motorcycle accident, COVID-19 death. Somebody drank himself to get death in Denver, COVID-19 death. So we see the purposeful ginning up. And we also know that the hospitals, the cities, the states, they get more money. So again, it's really wicked stuff. Now, here you go. We knew this was coming, right? So after the RNC last night, uh, basically this doctor gets on CNN and oh, it was so dangerous for them to meet outside like that with no masks. But then he goes on to say, but you know, there's a March on Washington coming and that was today, by the way. That's not a major concern because the participants are raising awareness for the public health crisis of systemic racism. So do you see what they're saying? Do, 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 we, do we not see this? It's total lies. It's total being manipulated by the media. Hear my voice. It's not like I'm some whatever. You just heard the doctor's own thing. It's like, well, it's the Republicans. It's bad. Death. Terrible. Oh, but if it's, you know, because you're going against systemic racism, it's, it's just okay. It's all right. And then here, you know, again, going along with this whole thing, Disney World uh, last week bars an autistic child who literally cannot wear a mask, cannot physically wear a mask from going into the park. Now, if you look over to the far right, and I think Disney's going to get sued bad on this, the father, when the employee was trying to tell them that he couldn't come in, the father basically cut off and said this, just answer the question, are you refusing to follow the Americans with Disabilities Act laws? And the, you know, the employee still wouldn't answer the question, but that's really what's going on. When you force everyone to wear a mask and everybody can't wear a mask, you know, let alone not want to, there are people that literally cannot wear masks. 
And yet we don't hear about that much, do we, from our governor or from the, the mayors or anybody else or the, what do they call them, the mask, uh, you know, whatever. Now, this is interesting. Wired Magazine, a technical magazine, and, you know, they're, they came out. Hey, here you go. How to prevent and treat face maskne. So people are getting acne from their masks, and so this is how to, you know, treat it. And what's causing maskne? And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, just think about that. If it's causing acne, what else is it causing that we we're not aware of yet? We know that it brings your oxygen level down. It can easily at least 10%, if not more. What is that doing to people long term? We, we don't hear these things, do we? It, it just, again, you, you see this stuff. And again, here's a great picture. So the above is okay. Notice, and Talia and I will be flying in a month or so, and we'll be going with, with through all this stuff, which is going to be a joy. But but look at down below. That's not okay. So you can fly with hundreds of people on an airplane, but you can't have church. So again, you, you see you, you see the thing. By the way, this is I, I could not believe this when I saw this. <laughs> you have people wearing masks. Okay, that. Um, are blowing through instruments, okay, and they think that they're being safe. Now, I don't. I I was in. I, I'm a musician, and if you've ever been around people who who play flutes or who you know do uh, French horns or other things, man, their whole horn is full of spit. Their whole thing is you. You talk about spit flying because even to get those things going, you have to, and you're spitting, and. Uh, but it's safe because the rest of their face is covered by a mask. You just can't, whatever. Now, again, I love this. John, uh, Josh, I forget his last name right now. Ferguson, I think. Or, Anyways, he said, To all the people claiming that Jesus would condone social distancing, I would remind you that he touched lepers when it was illegal. And that's a very true statement, by the way. That he was, They were supposed to be stoned if you touched any kind of lepers. Hey, what are you in for? Going the wrong way in the grocery store aisle. That's the, the, the how nuts it is. Hey, we're, we're, we're going to go a little long again tonight, but not as long as last week. You know, about another 10, 15 minutes. But again, you're free to go. That's the cool part. You know, I'm not holding you here. Um, just a few more things. I'm changing gears again. Going along with the whole one world system. Now, this is interesting to me. Check this out. For those of you who have... Um, you know, Siri at home, or those of you who had, you know, Alexa or different things, meet the star witness. And here it is, your smart speaker. And, you know, we've read over the last several months, um, even half a year, where people have been found guilty because of different um, recordings. Because Alexa, by the way, is always recording. And it's not just listening. That's the trippy part to me. It's actually recording. And so, but this case, there was a case where actually um, the, the defense wants the recording because they think it's going to help this guy be proven guilty. But the story kind of goes on to morph into how many police, um, how many cases have been used using the, you know, the Amazon and, and, and the Echo and Lexi. But if you notice, it's gone from around 1,000, well, almost 2,000 down, and now it's up to over 3,000. So... Again, it's kind of interesting when you think about it that, that some that Lexi's always listening. If you have that, we that's one thing I won't let into my home. I know that my iPhone's probably always listening like in that same way. I don't think it's recording though from what I know, but who knows. Anyway, here you go. Um, you know, Biden, I just wanted to bring this up because notice he pledges what to solve coronavirus, poverty, climate change, racism. <laughs> He's just going to do it all. I, he's been, you know, doing it for 47 years and all of a sudden. But here you go. Here's an interesting thing. Jamil Heal, I don't know who she was, but she was an, an ESPN host. And she said this, if you thought the United States wasn't nearly as bad as Nazi Germany, how wrong you are. And again, we, we've talked about this before. That's their, their goal is to, they've called Nazi, or Trump a Nazi. They call the people who follow him Nazis. Why? Because once they depersonalize him and they can hate him and, and can hate us as Christians even, guess what? Then they can start killing us or stoning us or beating us like they're doing in Portland and others they've done. And they don't care because in their minds they've justified it all the way. That was one of the interesting things that when I was watching the interview with uh, um, 
Ron Paul and his wife. His wife said it was like when I looked, because I was. She said I'm try, I tried to look into their eyes to, you know, make human contact. She said they 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 wouldn't. The way they looked at her, she was a piece of meat, and they just wanted her dead. That's exactly how she felt. So pretty interesting, you know. This next thing. Uh, I found interesting because, again, it goes to lawlessness. And, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton said Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances. Notice it says that, any circumstances. Hey, Hillary, what if he, what if he loses? Should he concede then? No, not under any circumstances. Now, real quick, I'm going to go quickly through these. But a lot of these people we've laughed with, a lot of these people have entertained us, we've loved their music or their acting or other things, the sport figures. But man, I'm telling you what, Hollywood and uh, sports and politics, for the most part, they are filled with very wicked and evil people who need Jesus so bad, but we need to be aware. I mean, these are all, Jim Keir's Jim Carrey, you know, uh, drawing a... Uh, an example of basically his derangement, how he feels Abraham Lincoln would react to the the, R, the, the, the RNC. Here we have Rob Reiner, you know, basically saying Trump is promoting white supremacy and letting Americans die. Uh, here we have Bette Midler and uh, Alec Baldwin uh, just saying wicked things. Is anyone else throwing up right now? Bette Midler uh, goes on and, and says this, uh, basically, uh, you know, he says, but during the uh, Rand Paul speech, um, she says, where's his neighbor when we need him? If you remember, his neighbor came over and beat Rand Paul up and almost killed him. So she's like, hey, wh why have somebody come and beat up Rand Paul? It's just disgusting. Uh, Bette Miller also tweeted about the first lady, basically racist, uh, stuff, xenophobic stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, and again, we're not surprised. Here's Mia Farrow and, uh, you know, but making fun and calling people names and uh, just wicked stuff. And I just wanted to point this out. We don't even have to go over them all. Alyssa Milano, some of these people I don't know, Franklin Leonard, uh, maybe you've heard of them, but on and on, the stars go and they're, they're just wickedness. Now, just briefly again, I want to talk about the dishonesty of today's media. And I always like to cover these kind of stories. And um, here, CNN cuts out of Trump's speech uh, at, at the RNC. A lot of what you just heard, this is what they said. From the President of the United States is wrong, misleading, and outright lies. Now, I watched a lot of the Democratic convention last week. They didn't one time correct any of the Democratic speakers, especially Joe Biden. Bias? You tell me. I'm not, you know. Look at this, LA Times. This is what they said. Republicans stoke fear with apocalyptic rhetoric. Again, that's not what they said about the Democrats. It's kind of interesting. How about this? Uh, CNN's Jake Trapper offers on-air correction on Donald Trump Jr.'s RNC speech. He basically said, Trapper said, if you look at the third column over, and then Donald Trump Jr. saying to keep the Confederate statues up. Well, Donald Trump Jr. never said that. Matter of fact, down below in that same column, this is what he said. So we're not going to tear down monuments. He didn't say anything about Confederate statues. Now, Jake Trapper actually offered a, a rare on-air apology. That's the fourth column over, so I'll give him credit for that. Now, here's an interesting thing. First night of RNC gets nearly six times more views on C-SPAN than DNC did the week prior. Now, again, but again, this shows you the wickedness. Look at this, CNN. A network analyst says COVID pandemic and Gulf uh, Coast hurricanes, karma for the USA. Karma for what? For electing Trump. Now, here's an interesting story. Broadcasters air 150 times more negative news on Trump than they do on Biden. Did you see that? I'm not even going to put the thing to me. 150 times more negative news on Trump than Biden. And, and it's easy to do, by the way. It's, it's not a hard thing to do. Now, here's a, a fake news story. This is just from the, the fires that they had there um, in Wisconsin that were set purposely of the rioting. Notice it's like this guy's um, reporting from CNN. He says, yeah, you know, the scene here is fiery, but mostly peaceful. And the fire's burning behind him. 
It's crazy. The, 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 it, more than three dozen buildings were burned down. Multitude of people were injured. Uh, law enforcement, uh, two people were killed. I mean, and oh well, it's fiery, but mostly peaceful. It's crazy. Even, you know, Wolf Blitzer, when they were doing this, notice what it says there. 8 p.m. curfew ordered after violent protesters over shooting. Now, if you watch the video, literally as he's talking, all of a sudden that changes and they just get rid of, rid of the word violent. It said 8 p.m. curfew ordered after protesters uh, over police shooting. So it, they get rid of the word violent. And again, they're cleaning it up. They don't want it. They don't want them to look bad. You know, I'm not going to cover this. This is Joe Biden just misspeaking. And, and yet again, he's covered, always covered by the left. And they don't say anything, you know, basically that here. Well, this one, um, Joe Biden says that Trump, you know, um, has never said one negative thing about white supremacists. And that's an outright lie. Um, actually, the time that he did say stuff about white supremacists is the same time that a lot of the left lies about and said that he said he was actually supporting them. And how about this? MSNBC <clears throat> cuts away during the RNC before it can hear a pro-life nun's deeply moving defense of the unborn. So they don't care. Again, it's just it's just wicked, even with the uh, the, the news behind them. Now we're seeing this. It came out yesterday. Nancy Pelosi says that she doesn't think that um, President Trump uh, should, or uh, that, uh, excuse me, um, that uh, Joe Biden should debate, that it would belittle uh, any debate. And uh, Biden said today that he will debate, so we'll see actually what happens. I, that'll be something. But it's interesting to note that even Franklin Graham said he saw a sharp distinction between the Republican National Convention and last week's Democratic National Convention, saying he thinks the Democratic Party is opposed to faith. And they are opposed to faith. Hey, if, you're, if you call yourself a Democrat and you call yourself a Christian, I'd love for you to contact us you know, through the website simplefaith.org and tell us how. Um, again, the Republican Party, I'm an independent, but the, the you know the Republican Party compared you just you have to look at what their their statements of beliefs are you know what they call their planks of, of their pat platforms and it's night and day and the and the the Democrats have gone so far left that even last week during their you know convention they even took God out of the Pledge of Allegiance at least a couple times that we know of so again I agree with Franklin here it's just kind of a wicked thing. Um, you know, and going into the the control of the big search engines and stuff um, a week ago, or just as, yeah, about a week ago now, um, you would Google uh, Antifa.com and guess where it would take you. If you're looking at the first column, all of a sudden, if you Googled Antifa.com, it would take you to this JoeBiden.com. And you know what's funny is on the, the right... That is actually a, a fact-checking website that is liberal, and guess what? They actually confirmed that it was redirecting people. However, it's been corrected. Now, going on to the moral, the immoralness within our culture, the evil and wickedness around the world, this is in Canada, and uh, the euthanasia deaths rise in Canada with one-third citing that they, they're killing themselves because they don't want to be a burden. Look all the way over to the right, if you will. A government report revealed that in 2019, 5,631 people were killed by euthanasia or assisted suicide, a rise of 26% from the year before. More than a third of the patients, 34%, who requested they be killed by their doctors, cited fear of being a burden to their families. Do you imagine? 13.7% said it was because of isolation or loneliness. Oh, just so wicked. The same stories covers the same thing. And here, you know, basically, the celebration of acts of cruelty. Dr. James Dobson decries California bill that would fund gender, gender mutilization and sterilization. Uh, the guy who wrote the bill, Assemblyman Miguel Santiago, tried to say that, you know, there's not sterilizing children, but that's a full-on lie because that's what they do. They have to sterilize a boy or, or mutilate a girl or a boy, you know, if they're going to do that to become a girl or a boy to switch over. 
They can't go back, by the way, and, and, and be the same. They're just, it can't happen because we don't have the technology for that, the science. And again, it's just wicked. But again, that they lie about it. Um, you know, this is really disturbing, too, in China. Basically, they're reporting that a lot of the hospital maternity wards, uh, if you have, there's something called, and I'm, I'm going to hack the way it's out this, but Uyghurs, basically, they're, they're an ethnic minority in China, along with other ethnic minorities. They're only allowed to have three children in rural areas or two children in urban areas. And enforcement of the restrictions basically goes on to say that if the children are born alive, and you already have your over your thing or you're having a baby too early, the, the doctors just kill the baby. And this is reported again by CBN News. And it's just the wickedness. It's Again, I'm pointing this out because it's around the world, guys and gals. Uh, here we go. Um, you know, basically in Virginia, a school court, you know, says that, or excuse me, a Virginia court that a school district is stim discriminated by not allowing a girl to use the boys' bathroom. Uh, just wickedness. In California, again, there's a Democrat that is pushing to decriminalize gay sex with minors. Now, notice he's pushing the gay part of it. So boys with men and, and women with girls. And so that it, because it's about their homosexuality, and that's what he's really pushing here. So again, you see this wickedness continuing to at least trying to be pushed through. This next thing, again, this is uh, in, uh, is it Korea? I forget. I'm sorry. Um, I should put my glasses on and I could probably read it. Um, but anyways, basically that they, they call this art. It's in Singapore. And so if you notice, these are little um, ceramic babies arms it may put in a sardine can or brains or different things, totally making fun of abortion. It's just, you know, <laughs> Lord strengthen me where I am weak and weaken me where I'm too strong. You know, I'm going to pass by some of this stuff. Um, just real quick, Australia's big four banks removed thousands of ATMs and shut down hundreds of branches as the coronavirus crisis pushes nation closer, what? To a cashless society. Just need to keep your eyes and ears on stuff like that. Um, Falwell, we, we were talking about uh, Falwell Jr. last week. He actually has now resigned um, as the president of Liberty. And says basically his wife's had an affair and all these other things were going on. And we need to pray for him and his family, pray for liberty. As the, the, one of the campus pastors apologizes to the student for the uh, sin that, that he got into. Now here's an interesting thing. A Fox News poll said 28% of white evangelicals plan to vote for Joe Biden. Now that's kind of, you know, I think that that's tied in with Relevant Magazine. It says this uptick uh, is 12 point lead on Hillary Clinton's evangelical support in 2016. I think those numbers are off, but I could be wrong. There is another poll, if you look down in the middle column down towards the bottom, um, that Pew Research did and said that 83% of white evangelicals support Trump and increased from 81%. Uh, so the numbers are kind of weird, but. Again, this is talking right now really about the, the falling away, if you will, these, these stories that we're in the middle of. A Georgia pastor is running, he's of a mega church, by the way, is running for U.S. Senate. And, and he said last week that he believes legalized abortion is consistent with Christianity and would fight to ensure it's, it, it remains legal. You just can't make this stuff up. Now, here's an interesting thing. Churches are finding relationships with people they thought were much deeper are not as deep as they expected. Study shows one in five churches may not survive COVID. And uh, if you look at the next story, a priest reports mass attendance significantly below pre-COVID-19 numbers. And, you know, we've been meeting back in our church for over three months. We, we, we were off for two months and we started back up and, uh, in May. And we've, you know, at that point, we might have gotten 40% of our people. And even now, we're probably maybe about 60% of our normal people. And we've gotten people from other churches. But it's really sad to see a lot of people are so afraid, too, too afraid. Honestly, as Christians, dude, it's we need to get over the fear, bro. Even, you know, we're all going to die someday. Don't be dumb, but don't be living in fear. And uh, But a lot of them are drifting away. I mean, look at this. This is another story. 
that ties in with all this. Uh, Christian Headlines reports drifting away from Scripture. 30% of evangelicals say Jesus was not God. So notice it says drifting away. I would say falling away, part of the great falling away that is predicted. And uh, it's crazy. Uh, Andy Stanley, a lot of us uh, love his father, yet he's mocking uh, John MacArthur and says, Jesus never commanded us to meet. And uh, basically, over on the right, he says, shaking his fist and mocking in fr frustration. You know, up above it actually says that he told Liberty, Liberty University students that people like John MacArthur, who believe that Jesus commands Christians to meet, are wrong. He goes on to say that Jesus never played the God card, quote unquote, and never claimed to be God. And therefore, somehow he concluded that Jesus never commanded Christians to meet. Just wickedness. And John MacArthur himself says that a lot of his family and friends, or not family, but a lot of his friends are not standing with him in the ministry. We talked a little bit about this last week. If you remember, Al Mohler came out. Well, apparently, Legan Duncan and Mark Deaver also have come out in opposition to uh, John MacArthur's meeting uh, in person. And just two quick stories to end with, uh, you know. Um, I thought well, this was kind of cute. At first, I actually thought they were reading Bible stories, so <laughs> I was all excited, but it just turned out to be regular stories. But this little girl is inviting little kids to come and sit on her grass and, and, and just read stories with her. I thought that was a really sweet and, you know, just a loving thing to do. And prayerfully, she's, she's a Christian, or she'll become a Christian and start reading some Jesus stories to them. And this was the good news. U.S. Marshals recovered 39 missing children in a Georgia operation. And you know, they recovered these uh, children ranged from 17 to 3 years old. And 15 of the kids, they said, were uh, being victims of sex trafficking. So, you know, just as we're closing tonight, we, we see this news. And honestly, uh, there was a lot more stories that you probably know, too, that we could could. Uh, continue just to, to share and, and go on but this is the world we're living in right now this is the times that jesus told us about i believe firmly he might not and that's okay i'm not here to convince you i'm just putting this before you and showing you how it ties in and, and to me and i'll be honest with you Tilly and i were just talking about this the other night how much it continues just to deepen our faith just to strengthen us. I'm like, you know what, Lord? I'm not going to choose the things. I'm not going to watch that movie. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to. I just want you, Jesus. I want more of you. I want to share you more. And I think that's why Jesus told us to be watching for these things, to be the good servants, the faithful servants who are watching for our Lord's return. And so, hey, you know what? If you need the church to go to, we're open. We're here. Um, if you're if you're not if you're away from here and you're, you're watching this somewhere else, find an open church and get out and go to church, beloved in Christ. It's time. It's been almost six months, guys and gals. Remember, it's here forever. This this virus isn't going anywhere. And what is it? Ninety eight percent of those who get it survive it. And I again, I believe the numbers are higher than that. But you know what, guys and gals, are, we need to come back to trusting in the sovereignty of God. Nothing comes to us but by him. And so we're walking through the fire these days. Hey, let's go out like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hey, even if our Lord doesn't save us, we will not yield to this culture. We will not yield to fear. Hey, let me pray for you real quick. Lord, I just lift up everybody who's watching. Everybody who's listening, may you bless them, may you strengthen them, may you awaken us, Lord, to the deeper things in you, may you give us that burden, Lord, just to go out and share the good news, may we understand as we see these things that you told us they were coming, may we be brave in these times to stand up against the wickedness, Lord, yet not in spite, Lord, but with a righteous anger and a fear of you, Lord God, and a hope to bring people to you, Jesus. Lord, I pray if anybody's watching and they haven't come to faith in you, they haven't repented of their sins and believed on you, that you'd soften their hearts this day and that they would do so today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Keep you. May you make his, make his face to shine upon you. And have a great week, even in the midst of everything going on. Let's, you know, Jesus said, Blessed is he who endureth to the end. Keep enduring, beloved in Christ. Keep walking 
in the Spirit of God. God bless you.